What's at stake for the Kurds in Syria? Turkey considers the Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces a threat to its security and wants to establish a border buffer zone. The U.S. backs the Kurdish fighters and says it wants to prevent a Turkish offensive against the SDF. Can the NATO allies bridge their differences over the Kurds? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Hashim Ahlbarra. Turkey's president has warned he's lost his patience with the United States over the establishment of a safe zone in northern in northeast Syria. And Rajab Tayyip Erdogan says he will order an offensive against the Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces. The Turks consider the US-backed SDF a terrorist organization and wants to protect its border with a buffer zone. But American troops are there and the Pentagon's warned against any Turkish incursion targeting its Kurdish ally in the battle against ISIL. It's our top priority to drain the terror swamp in northern Syria. Turkey cannot feel safe as long as the structure in the south, which is growing like a cancer cell and is increasing with the heavy weapons of our allies, is not eliminated. If we don't do what's needed today, we would have to do it tomorrow by paying a bigger cost. God willing, we will bring our operations to a different phase very soon. We've been heavily engaged with the Turks uh, uh, with regard to their security interests in northern Syria. Uh, clearly, we believe any unilateral action by them would be unacceptable. And so what we're trying to do now is work out with them uh, an arrangement to address their concerns. And uh, I'm hopeful we'll get there. At the same time, what we're going to do is prevent unilateral incursions that would upset, again, these mutual interests that both the United States, Turkey, and the SDF share with regard to northern Syria. Zeyna Khodor has more on the talks from Gaziantep on the Turkey-Syria border. For months, the United States and Turkey have been engaged in discussions over what Turkey calls a safe zone along Syria's northeastern border. Those negotiations have been difficult, differences deep. It has been difficult, really, for the United States to try to balance the interests and demands by two allies, Turkey being a NATO ally. The Syrian armed Kurdish group, the YPG, is an ally of the United States in its fight against ISIL. Um, the differences really have been over the length and the depths of the zone, as well as who will control the zone, and most importantly, the fate of the YPG. Turkey considers the YPG a terrorist organization, and it, it, it wants the group to be, in its words, neutralized. But the United States wants to continue to cooperate with this actor in Syria, it, what it calls a partner in Syria, in the, in the ongoing fight against ISIL. So it is not clear if the, these two countries will be able to reach a deal. It has tested their relationship. A lot really is, is at stake because Turkey has repeatedly warned that it will act alone it will carry out a cross-border operation if there is no deal with the United States. Uh, the United States has warned against this. Uh, of course, a, a cross-border, a unilateral cross-border operation would be risky. There could be unintended uh, confrontation between two NATO allies. And it's not just that. The YPG has promised to fight back. For a corner of Syria, which is so strategic for many players, many players want this corner of Syria. It's rich in oil, and it is, of course, the breadbasket of Syria, and it gives each of these players more influence in the Syrian conflict. Zena Khodr for Inside Story. If Turkish army commanders get the go ahead, it will be the third incursion into Syria in the past four years. The first was three years ago. Operation Euphrates Shield aimed to capture the northern town of Jarablus, which was held by ISIL for two and a half years. The Turkish operation was also aimed at limiting the growing influence of the Syrian Kurdish led alliance and the formation of a Kurdish state on Turkey's border. Turkey considers the US backed Syrian Democratic Forces a terrorist organization. The Idlib and Afrin offensives followed in the next two years. Turkey agreed to set up a de escalation zone as part of a deal with Russia. Now, Turkey plans to target areas east of the Euphrates River where hundreds of US troops are stationed. Let's bring in our guests here with us in Doha is Marwan Qabalan, Syrian political analyst and head of the policy analysis at the Arab Center for Research. In Ankara, 
Barin Keolo, professor of world history at the American University of Iraq, Soleimani, and from Norman, Oklahoma via Skype, Joshua Landis, director of the Center for Middle East Studies, University of Oklahoma, and editor of Syria Comment blog. Welcome to the program. Marwan, this seems to be uh, a push to come up with an agreement between the Turks and uh, the Americans about uh, safe buffer zones, but is this something they can agree on permanently, or do you see the potential for a confrontation between the Americans and the Turks there? Well, theoretically, I mean, they might come up with an agreement, although, I mean, there are major differences on the, on the buffer zone. Uh, as Zina actually mentioned in the report, there is uh, differences over the, the depth of the buffer zone. The Americans are willing to give the Turks something like five kilometers inside Syrian territories, whereas the, the Tur Turkish government is seeking actually something like between 20 and 30 miles uh, depth within uh, inside Syrian territory. It's about also whether the Turks can actually enter Kurdish villages and towns on mm -hmm. the borders, on the strip of borders between Syria and and Turkey, and also there is the question of what happens to the heavy weapons with the YBG, because the Turkish government is also asking the United States to disarm the Kurdish militia from the heavy weapons which have been provided mm -hmm. uh, while it was actually fighting fighting ISIL. So there are major differences still between the, okay. two, uh, the two parties. Although I mean, as I said, I mean theoretically they can actually agree on okay. a, a compromise, but. I mean, that is not the only issue mm -hmm. that we must keep in, okay. in mind. There is another issue that is very important, in my opinion, because although it looks very much like a bilateral issue between the United States and Turkey... There are different get, regional forget, players. Forget, we will, we will come to the regional yeah. uh, implications. Bahrain, the, uh, the Turks and the Americans seem to be now narrowing differences over the issue of the safe zones. But is this the focal point of the, issue, of the problem, or is there is more to it? Thank you. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me on the show. That's a great question. Um, uh, whether uh, the, uh, the issue of the buffer zone is, a, is an issue of itself or as part of a much broader set of problems uh, in U.S.-Turkish relations, the answer is both. Uh, on the one hand, uh, Ankara genuinely sees the PYD, um, the, uh, 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 the uh, party for uh, uh, People's uh, Unity Party in Syria, as an extension of the PKK. And in fact, uh, the PYD and its, uh, and its armed wing, uh, uh, YPG, do not deny the fact that uh, they take inspiration from uh, the uh, imprisoned leader of the PKK, Abdullah Öcalan. And as we know, in the last, um, uh, since 2014, uh, the PYD, as part of the uh, Syrian Democratic Forces, SDF, uh, have expanded. Uh, in the, uh, their, their, the area under their control in northeastern Syria as part of the uh, operations, uh, as part of the operations uh, against ISIS. This is a genuine uh, security threat uh, for Turkey, mm -hmm. but it also is a very important problem in U.S.-Turkish relations because uh, the PYD's uh, main sponsor, main international backer, is the U.S. government mm -hmm. uh, since 2014, starting with first airstrikes and then U.S. special operations uh, operatives uh, being inserted into northeastern Syria, the United States has become uh, 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 the main sponsor of the PYD and the SDF. Okay. And um, it's, uh, it's basically Sophie's choice. You know, on the one hand, you have your NATO ally, and the, on the other hand, you have your main and most since, effective local actor against ISIS. Since you mentioned the U.S. influence and link to the YPD and YPG, Joshua, is this a whole debate just about the buffer zone and the details of buff buffer zones, how deep should be, who should be in control, who should monitor the area? Or is it from an American perspective? Because the moment the Turks said that they would like to go east of the Euphrates, that was a red flag from an, from the, for, the, for, the, for, for the Trump administration. Uh, yes, you know, I think to understand the Turkish point of view, you have to look at the two major shifts in American policy. We have to remember that that Obama encouraged the Turks to get involved in Syria and that America would follow behind. They were going to put the Sunni Arabs in power. Then America got spooked by the Sunni Arabs. It switched from the Sunni Arabs to the Kurds in order to destroy ISIS. It promised the Turks that once it had destroyed ISIS, it would get rid of the, it would take back the heavy weapons and it would leave the region. Now, that has infuriated the Turks because both of these promises, to help the Sunni Arabs come to power and then 
to leave Syria after ISIS was destroyed have not been fulfilled. And the United States has switched its policy to an anti-Iran policy and staying in Syria for the long duration. Now, from an American point of view, they want to stay in Syria because they believe they have to roll back Iran, they have to continue fighting ISIS, this is the war on terror, and that Turkey is upsetting the apple cart. Uh, America's convinced that they can have it both ways. They can have a Turkish ally, mm -hmm. and they can continue to support the YPG because they believe the YPG is not a terrorist organization. Mm -hmm. They can successfully build a firewall between the YPG and the PKK. Okay. The Turks aren't buying this, okay. and we're at loggerheads. Marwan, as uh, Joshua was basically saying, that irrespective of whether there's a deal or not about the buffer zone, we're talking about now a never-growing political l landscape in, in Syria itself, where the Americans are looking into different potential challenges, particularly when it comes to the Iran. Isn't this something which could further complicate the task for the Turkish government, which says that it is determined, if there's no agreement, to move forward with its military campaign? Well, I think, I mean, well, I, 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 uh, this is something, in my opinion, is going to be very difficult for Turkey actually to move in without mm -hmm. the consent of the United States, especially now after the U.S. Secretary of Defense has warned against, against that. And in my opinion, Turkey has been actually threatening to invade, to go inside Syria for the past few months, at least since President Trump actually said that he would like to withdraw from eastern Syria. Um, but of course, I mean, the, new, the, the U.S. administration the strategy of the U.S. administration, because it's, it's very much complicating the situation for Turkey, not only for Turkey, it's also for Russia, because Turkey and Russia both, act, both actually were expecting the United States to leave the eastern part of Syria, eastern of the Euphrates, the moment they defeat ISIL. But that actually is not, is not the case right now. Uh, we all know that President Trump is very willing uh, to leave, actually, but it's the Pentagon which wants to stay very much. Because, you know, I mean, President Trump, he, he twice, actually, he called for the withdrawal mm. of, US, of U.S. troops from the country. But I think now they convinced him that it's more useful, perhaps, for the United States to stay because they can actually prevent Iran from having this, this land corridor between Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And they will actually prevent the revival of ISIL, and they will use, actually, their presence Mm. military presence uh, east of the Euphrates in order to put pressure on the Syrian regime to accept a political solution to this conflict because we all know that the eastern part of Syria is useful Syria in fact it, it includes uh, oil gas water uh, and almost everything that Syria needs in fact mm. and no regime in Damascus can survive actually without having back without recovering the eastern part of the Euphrates. So the United States actually feel now that this could be used as a card in order to uh, uh, put the pressure on the regime to accept a political solution, the regime and its allies. But, but as you said, it's, it's much more complicated than that. There are other actors and they mm. are actually have as much uh, uh, say in this, uh, in this conflict as, mm -hmm. as the United States and Turkey. Bahrain, when, 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 let, let's set aside the differences between the Americans and the Turks, but when Erdogan says that he is determined, dead set on moving forward to the east of Euphra Euphrates, uh, should we really take him seriously on this, given the fact that the military establishment seems to be really, really, really sceptical about a deeper involvement in the conflict in Syria? Uh, yes and no. That's also a great question. Yes and no. I would say, because on the one hand, um, uh, since Turkey conducted its uh, first uh, major military incursion into Syria in 2016 uh, against first ISIS in August uh, 2016, uh, uh, Operation Euphrates Shield, and then last year, early last year, uh, against the PYD in the Afrin region, uh, Operation Olive Branch, uh, there has been talk of um, staging an operation, uh, they even have the, the, the code name out, Operation Euphrates Sword, very clearly uh, geared, uh, aimed at uh, the eastern part of uh, the eastern part of the uh, Euphrates River. And so, uh, he, this, on the one hand, yes, it, we have heard this before. On the other hand, uh, President Erdogan may either deliberately or uh, unintentionally paint himself into a corner and, and, uh, end up delivering, if you will, uh, basically forcing his own hand to conduct some sort of operation uh, into eastern Syria. As for uh, the Turkish uh, high commands, the Turkish uh, military brass's uh, position on this, they really uh, are not in a position at the moment to completely resist uh, President Erdogan's 
uh, desires. Uh, we had seen this in 2013, 2014, 2015, when President Erdogan wanted uh, some sort of intervention uh, by the Turkish military in northern Syria, and the uh, high command was opposed to this. But after the uh, failed coup attempt of July 2016, mm -hmm. President Erdogan still uh, holds the reins over the military, and the former chief of general staff, Hulusi Akar, is still the defense minister. So we see uh, a very serious um, control on the part of President Erdogan okay. over the military, and I don't think the Turkish military, irrespective of its position, is in a position to resist uh, pre the, its commander-in-chief's uh, orders if they're ordered to go into Syria. Joshua, when Defense Secretary Mark Esper uh, spoke about the U.S. taking action without specifying what kind of action if the, um, if the Turks decide to uh, launch the military offensive east of the Euphrates, was he talking about sanctions or a potential for an aggressive response from the Americans? Well, that's, that's an excellent question, and he, he didn't specify. And there's, there's a conf confusion about what America can do and what it should do, because America does not want to get in a shooting war with Turkey. We have to remember that the reason that America is in northern Syria is based on a resolution about uh, provided by Congress about fighting the war on terror. That means ISIS. So if this spins into a war on Turkey, the Congress is going to be furious and Americans will be furious. And, and even President Trump has been painting himself in the present presidential campaign as somebody who wants to get out of the Middle East. Look what he's doing in Afghanistan. He's just withdrawing American troops. He says at every occasion, just a month ago, he said, we're going to leave Syria and we can they can take care of themselves. So President Trump does not want a shooting war with Turkey. If and Erdogan knows that, and he is playing on that. And every time he escalates, he gets and can get Trump on the phone. Trump says, we're leaving. <clears throat> and then the men around him roll that back. So he is trying to split Trump from the Pentagon and the State Department and, and mm -hmm. so forth. And, mm -hmm. and that's his strategy right now, is to escalate, get Trump on the phone. He needs the Americans to get out of there and fulfill their promise. And he's going to be beating this drum until the Americans leave. Okay. And we have to remember, this okay. is an inhospitable environment for the Americans. The Syrians don't want him, the Iraqis don't want him, the Russians don't want him, the Iranians don't want him, and the Turks don't want him. So he's going to raise the price, and they're all going to raise the price mm -hmm. on America until mm -hmm. America leaves. That's the strategy. Well, one, we tend sometimes to talk about the big players there, but we, we're not talking here about the Syrians. Where does it leave Syria? Well, actually, we're talking here about Russia, in fact, mainly, mm -hmm. because uh, Russia is uh, watching closely the talks between the Americans and the Turks. Mm -hmm. And we have noticed uh, over the past few months that uh, when the Russians feel that the Americans and the Turks are close to having an agreement on the Eastern Euphrates, they are escalating on the West, in, in Idlib mainly. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I think the, 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 the Russian strategy has always, from the very beginning, to separate between Turkey and the United States. It's clear that the Russians, they want the Americans out, but they don't want Turkey in. They want actually the regime to recover the Eastern Euphrates uh, region, mm -hmm. because as I said before, uh, it's, it's very rich in oil and gas and in water and the regime in Damascus will be uh, dependent on Russia mm. for handout if uh, if if it doesn't get uh, or recover the Eastern Euphrates uh, region so the Russians they want the regime very much and how does the Syrian back. government see this well, of course, I mean, this is a basic interest for the Syrian government as well, actually, is to uh, recover the, the region of uh, uh, east of the Euphrates uh, and to, uh, to, to, recontrol, to, co to control it uh, once, uh, once again. So the, Russians, the, the Russian important in my, uh, position, in my opinion, is, is very important here. And as I said, they are watching closely what's happening between the Russians, between the, the Americans and, and the Turks. Bahrain, we have here regional players vying for a bigger say in the aftermath of what happens in Syria. So you have the Iranians, you have the Russians, you have the Americans, and you have the Turks. I mean, from a Turkish perspective, can we say this a prelude to Turkey trying to rethink its presence militarily, politically, once Syria splinters or is divided? Um. Turkey's interest, I would say, is to uh, keep Syria as much of a unitary state as possible. Uh, several times, uh, Turkish President Erdogan himself has said that Turkey does not wish to see an autonomous Kurdish region in northeastern Syria, in northern Syria, uh, the way uh, there is now a Kurdistan 
regional uh, governments in the north of Iraq, even though uh, Turkey still enjoys um, fairly good relations with the KRG, with the uh, Iraqi Kurdistan uh, regional government. Um, uh, it, policymakers in Ankara currently do not, cannot foresee a scenario uh, where they could enjoy uh, similarly good relations uh, with a, an autonomous Kurdish uh, administration in northern Syria. That has, of course, much to do with the fact uh, that uh, ideologically, whatever Syrian uh, Kurdish uh, autonomous administration is established in northern Syria, it would have ideologically a very different outlook mm -hmm. on Turkey's Kurdish question than that of Iraq's uh, uh, KRG. Joshua, um, so um, I see your point. Turkey's first uh, issue is to maintain uh, uh, Syria as a unitary state mm -hmm. and to find uh, a space in northern Syria to uh, repopulate uh, some of the Syrian refugees in Turkey. This is becoming okay. an, an increasingly uh, bigger hot potato in domestic Turkish politics. Just so I'll say those two. Thank you. Joshua, you spoke earlier about the uh, uh, geopolitical uh, considerations taken by the American uh, administration, but by maintaining a presence there in a very complex political landscape, aren't you concerned that this could backfire in the future, knowing that you have, at the same time, the Russians who are pretty much concerned about the Americans trying to expand their influence in Syria? Um, yes, you know, there's two considerations for the United States. One is their plan is to make an autonomous zone in the north of Syria. Even if they succeed in using the leverage of, of, of northern Syria in order to change the government in Damascus, which is their plan, <clears throat> is to weaken Damascus to such a point that Assad and the Russians have to agree to UN e over-sponsored elections, democratic elections, uh, Assad leaving, some other regime that would allow for autonomy, that's the American wish, in all these regions, in Idlib and northern Aleppo, and so that each area would have their own setup. That means the Kurds get relative independence. Turkey isn't going to put up with that. America is going to have, find it extremely difficult to remain in this area. As we've seen already, Arabs and Kurds are coming to uh, have deep differences in the region, and all the regional players want America out. It's mm -hmm. going to be a difficult, okay. heavy push for the United States. Marwan, are the Syrians talking about what's next? Are, are they willing to debate a divided Syria north? Damascus and then northeast. Now, perhaps if there is something that the regime and the opposition would agree on is that to keep Syria one united uh, country, uh, they might be actually fighting over every other thing. But, but of course, I mean, not this one. So this is why, I mean, uh, the Russians, they are hoping actually that they can bring regime and the opposition uh, in order to agree on a political solution that is tailored by the Russians and that would actually maintain the, the unity of, of Syria. And that might also be the interest of Turkey and, and Iran, because we are seeing those are the partners of the Asatana process uh, trying to do something. And they are very suspicious of the intentions of the United States in the Eastern Euphrates. And this is perhaps some people think that it is America interest, mm -hmm. as Joshua has, has mentioned, actually, to have mm -hmm. an autonomous Kurdish region in the northeast of Syria. Bahrain, in less than 30 seconds, please. Is there a general sentiment in Turkey in favor of a military offensive? Or do you think they have had enough of economic and political problems and they really want to stay away from, Turkey, from, from Syria? Um, Turkish peoples, from what I can see, I've uh, been here uh, for my summer break for about uh, almost three months now, and my sense is that most of my compatriots are more interested in uh, seeing that uh, the, the, the country's economic problems are resolved. Uh, however, uh, given that, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the, uh, there's a groundswell against uh, Syrian refugees, if Erdogan, if President Erdogan could also package any impending military operation as a way of increasing Turkey's uh, bargaining power in Syria, that could be sold uh, to Turkish domestic, uh, to the Turkish Thank domestic you. public opinion. Thanks to our guests, Marwan Kablan, Barin Kayolo, and Joshua Landis. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's Facebook facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Hashim Ahlbar and the whole team here in Doha. Bye for now.